I'm Adrienne Finch, I am 26 years old and I'm getting rhinoplasty. My main goal, well first of all, is to have better breathing out of mostly my left nostril. My left nostril has a way harder time breathing, especially at night, than my right one, and I'm definitely a nose breather, so I get kind of like apnea symptoms at night. In terms of like aesthetically, obviously that's going to change the outer aesthetic of my nose, and so therefore I then want to obviously balance everything out, and if I'm under the knife, I'm doing it big, you know? Open rhinoplasty specifically are one of the two techniques that you can use to perform a rhinoplasty procedure. Uh, rhinoplasty, of course, is nasal reshaping, changing the nose to have a shape that you have in line with your self-image. This is something like I've talked about and thought about since I was a kid, but I never, ever was actually gonna do it. I'm not doing this to be like more confident or more secure. Like for a really long time, I was very self-conscious about other things about my body, my weight, the way that I looked in certain other ways. And I made it a point to myself that I cannot even remotely think about getting cosmetic surgery until all the things that I'm unhappy with that I can control are controlled. I'm in a point in my life where like everything's great. Like I am happy, I am secure, I think I'm cute sometimes. Genuinely the reason I'm doing this surgery is because I actually for the first time am okay with having my nose the way it is. So some people will be like, that doesn't make any sense, then don't do it. But it's actually kind of like, why not do it if I finally feel secure and stable and comfortable in who I am? So then it's like, great, then do this one thing that like will that you like. I like to meet patients that are happy in their life already. This should actually help them feel good about themselves and if anything, maintain the life they have. Uh, patients who say that this is gonna change their life for the better and things will come from it are usually not the right candidate. What pushed me to really do it was when I started having breathing problems. I got hit in the face super hard with the soccer ball a couple years ago and I, I'm unsure still if that's for sure what caused this or whether or not like I just, my nose grew or something changed, I don't know. It was almost like, okay, this is now an issue beyond just aesthetic. Last year, I got three consultations. I went to three doctors, and my friend Tara, who works for Cosmetic Town, really helped me to find the good doctors, the best possible ones. This is not something where you wanna skimp on you know, quality because of price. This is something that if you can't afford a good nose surgeon, don't get a nose job yet. Wait till you're older, or whatever it is. Like, you do not wanna skimp on the quality of the surgeon, so I finally chose my doctor, Dr. Deer, he is just so like caring of his patients. He wants them to get the best result they possibly can. He makes me feel comfortable and okay. Yes, the technical skill is so important, but if a doctor has the technical skill, I will always choose the one that like has better bedside manner be only because like, yes, their job is to like fix my nose and not like be my friend, but this is a really big deal and it, it can be really scary and this is not something that I take lightly so even though some doctors do like four nose surgeries a day for me this is my one nose and my one life and my one appearance so it's like a huge deal and Dr. Deer definitely recognizes that. This is my nose. Hello nostrils. So Adrian has got a case that we talked about the goals that not only include the dorsum or the, the hump, but also includes the tip. So we're gonna do the dorsum, which is the hump. We're gonna refine the nasal bones, bring them in so they're not too pinched. Her tip, we wanna refine it, it's a little bulbous. She calls it with a knob uh, with her mom. Uh, we're gonna bring it in so it's refined a little bit more. Um, we don't wanna say pinched or narrow, just refine it. We also have to support it up so when she smiles, it doesn't plunge downward. And of course, bring it into her face just a little bit. This side of my nose. Hello, yes. And this side of my nose. Tomorrow is the first day that marks a week until my surgery. <laughs> my mom is flying here from Seattle on Friday to take care of me for the week. I have to discontinue all medication, cannot drink alcohol, can't have certain like supplements and like no ibuprofen, Tylenol, Adderall, anything. I can still have my birth control. Um, but I also can't have like herbal tea and all these weird things. I have a full list of things that I can't have. Let's do it. And I just am super ADD as you guys know. So I'm worried that I'm literally gonna forget certain things that I can or can't do. I actually need to make a chart that kind of says like when everything has to be done and like when I can start taking stuff again. And like, for example, I can't wear glasses for three weeks after surgery. So my mom comes on Friday. We have surgery on Tuesday. I have a post-op appointment the very next day on Wednesday morning, which might be rough because I'm gonna be feeling probably not that good. And then I get my cast off on Monday the 25th. I'm feeling pretty good. 
I feel like I'm like very mentally ready and excited and I bet like when I'm in the car tomorrow, I'm gonna be nervous. It's just such a weird concept. Like BRB going comatose for four hours and like waking up not knowing what year it is, but it's cool. Anesthesiologist will be in contact uh, later today. Perfect. And then otherwise, we'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Okay, see you then. Excited? Yeah, no, I'm I actually am. Good. That's actually a good thing. We spent a lot of time getting to this point. I'm actually more nervous about the cast removal than this because then that's when you see it, and then I'm like, oh my god, you know, this part. Like, that's my favorite part. <laughs> that's why I get to show my art. That's my most nerve-wracking part. The best thing to do is we talked about it um, in detail. Is what we can do to a nose that it's asking for that's bothering you. Take mm -hmm. those away, and it actually remains the essence of your yeah. nose, and that keeps it looking natural and safe. Mm -hmm. Although it may not be the perfect nose that you want that someone else may have, but it's what your nose maybe would be if we can just take away those things. Yeah. So we will collect this bulbous tip, uh, yes. otherwise known as AKA knob. The knob. <laughs> Call it my knob. The knob. Always the ones who love us my the most. My mom says my knob. <laughs> She's like, are they going to fix your knob? I'm like, yes. Yes, I, I, I've read <laughs> a lot of textbooks around on plastic. We and, uh, knob has never been put in the word. Yeah. I like it. We can take that one for us. <laughs> those are the goals we agreed upon. Yes. Anything else I missed? I don't think so. All right, let's do this. Yeah, let's do it. Have a moment. Just think of a nice vacation spot. <laughs> oh, I trust you like a dad. Sup, homie. It kind of hurts to talk, but I'm like very aware and conscious, which I didn't expect. I kind of expected me to just be blacked out for like eternity. And I just feel like I have seasonal allergy headache, you know, like where up here it's just like very congested in a way that hurts my brain. I'm gonna take some meds. I want to see what I look like. I can't move my upper lip down enough. It makes me sad. The very next day after surgery, I feel great. Like, I feel totally fine, to be honest. I slept really well. I gained feeling back in my upper lip, so that's cool. So now, really, all that's going on is, like, my eyes are so puffy and swollen and bruised. But that is normal. I'm back in Dr. Deer's office. I'm obsessed with this view. What's up, squad? We're with Dr. Deer. Is that what we call a squad? I like yeah, that. I don't know. I just said that yesterday when I was super loopy still. And I was like, oh, let's stick with squad. it. She did amazing, guys. She's oh my doing gosh, great. she did amazing. Uh, we had a lot of her goals in play. She's healing well. Yeah. You should see the other guy. Uh, <laughs> it is day four, post op. I'm getting a little bored. I'm getting ready to get this thing off my face. <laughs> I can feel the splints in there now, like almost in the back of my throat. Oh, it feels so terrible. So at my post-op appointment, I basically got my cast off. I got the splints taken out, which was pretty painful, honestly. Dr. Deer had also mentioned that I may start feeling a little bit of depression around this time. I felt no depression whatsoever. Um, a lot of people, I guess, start regretting it or feeling weird about it, which is only temporary. I did not. I had such an easy recovery. It was completely painless. It was funny, it was fun, it was just really great all around. So I got my cast taken off and they did a really good job reminding me that my face was going to be fat, okay? This was not the final result. It takes up to a full year to heal. This is six days after surgery. Ah, I'm scared. I'm scared, I'm scared to look. Should I look, do I do it, do I just not? How about I just don't, it's cool. Oh yeah, oh I still look so dumb. Oh my god, I don't have a bump. That's so weird. Okay, yeah, side view is beautiful. Oh my god, weird. And I don't look like a pig, and I thought I would. <laughs> One tape down the side, and what you do is you just squeeze it. Oh. And so you do this. <laughs> Congratulations. I have a new schnoz. Thank you for the schnoz. The new schnoz. <laughs> Here I am officially two months post-op. I cannot believe how fast everything went by. I feel so good. This was definitely one of the best decisions I've ever made. It was so easy. It was so painless. Everything just went really well. And I'm really, really happy. What 
advice would you give someone who is thinking about potentially getting a nose procedure or any cosmetic procedure done? Yeah. Oh man. So I would give the advice of just like, A, like we already talked about, be in the right mental state to do something like this. Don't do it for the wrong reasons. Don't totally. do it because you think it's gonna absolutely alter your life. Um, so be in the right mental state. B, really know what you want and do your research and use a website like Cosmetic Town. Use it. Cosmetic Town is an online website, a resource where you can learn everything about the way a procedure works, what you should be looking for, which doctors exist. Tara basically hit me up saying, yo, I started working for this company, let me help you find a doctor. You guys have thousands of doctors, all these videos, everything. You have so much stuff. Like use it because you don't know the first thing about plastic surgery and you need to do your research. This is not one of those things you just like, even doctors who are certified, like there are people you don't want to go to and people you want to go to. So just really carefully choose your doctor and figure out what you want. Less is more. You'd rather have Definitely. less done and you know, maybe revise it later or just don't because if they take off too much or they do it in a way you don't want, you cannot go back. Yeah. So less is more. I'd rather go out of the surgery being like, oh man, I wish he like took a little more off the bump versus, oh my God, my nose is like skinny and tiny. Like Definitely. I can't like add to it. Research is something that we really want to get across to people because people don't know what they're getting themselves into. Like it's something that is not common. People don't just know like what goes into a rhinoplasty yeah, procedure. Exactly. It's just something that they're maybe seeing before and after photos and they're like, I want to look like that or right. I don't want to look like right. that. And, they're like, and also, Instagram's such a big tool for mm -hmm. doctors and you know a lot of people may be really well marketed but or you know altering those photos people don't know what they're getting themselves into so it's really important to do your research yeah. properly and really get properly educated mm -hmm. on it because there's a lot of doctors who have zero followers on Instagram but they're so talented so at talented. what they do they care about everybody that they're operating yeah. on and it's something that it's just like knowing and having that connection with them yeah. too is just so important rather than just like going into it blindly. Exactly. If any of you guys are considering cosmetic procedures, I highly recommend using Cosmetic Town. Basically a one-stop shop for researching and finding a doctor, for learning all about procedures, what types of procedures are even out there and what do they fix. On the website, I basically found out what is open rhinoplasty, what is closed rhinoplasty, what even is rhinoplasty, what's a nose job. They have a ton of articles written by doctors that you can trust and who specialize in certain areas and they have several other procedures on there as well. They even have a YouTube channel with videos that completely break down procedures. It's called Procedure 411. You can even see procedures start to finish if you're into that kind of thing. <laughs> so they've got a lot. They want patients to make educated decisions. They want them to make decisions that are going to make them look and feel their best.